hello everyone today we are going to discuss enthelmintics it comes under 6th semester pharmacology gujarat technological university and myself dinesh dangar enthelmintics these are the agents which are used to expel out the worms which are present in digestive system so generally they destroy or eliminate those parasitic worms generally we used to call it as helminths that is from the gastrointestinal tract they may act by killing or paralyzing the worms so that such worms could be easily expelled out of gut while coming to the reproduction this parasitic worms formerly holds the intestinal mucosa and continue their reproduction by egg production so they used to be present on intestinal mucosa leading to the further formation of new egg which could be harmful for the body they harm the host by depriving them of food causing blood loss injury to the organs intestinal and lymphatic obstructions and secreting toxins so these are all the uh, effects that can be observed with helminth welcome to the types of worms they are basically three types cystodes that is tapeworm nematodes that is round worm and trematodes that is flux here we can see certain examples of those worms first that is common round worm that is Ascaris lumbricoides. Next one that is for filariasis. Hookworm. Pinworm, male and female. Tapeworm. Whipworm. Tricuris. Trigura types of anthelmintics. Now, depending upon the actions, anthelmintics can be categorized into two that is, vermifuses and vermicides. Generally, vermifuses expel the worm from the body, whereas vermicides kill the worms in the body. It's like uh, we can, well, you know, previously we had a discussion regarding bacteriostatics and bactericidal effect. Now, going with the classification for enthelmintics. First category that is benzimidazoles. Examples are mebendazole, albendazole, thiabendazole. Quinolones and isoquinolones that is oxaminiquine, praziquantel. Pyrazine derivatives that is pyrazine and diethylcarbamazine. Fourth category, vinyl pyrimidines that is pyrantel, palmoate, oxantel, amides, that is niclosamides, 6 that is natural products like that is ivermectin, 7 that is organophosphorus compounds that is metriphonate, 8 that is imidazole, thiozole that is levamizole and ninth category that is used that is nitro derivatives like niradozole. This classification is taken from the KD Tripathi 6th edition. Here is the another one that is from the 8th edition of the KD Tripathi. This classifi classification is based on the types of worms present inside gastrointestinal tract. Suppose for the treatment of roundworm, hookworm and pimworm, we can go with the albendazole, mabendazole, pyrantel, palmoate, piperazine, levamisole. For threadworm, ivermectin and the albendazole. For whipworm, trichinella, spiralsis that is albendazole and mebendazole for the in the cases of filariasis we can go with the diethylcarbamazine ivermectin albendazole for tapeworms praziquantel niclosamide and albendazole for hydrated disease albendazole and mebendazole can be used here one thing is common that is albendazole that can be used for the treatment of most probably all types of worms first drug that is mebendazole it is basically a synthetic benzimidazole with wide spectrum of the enthelmintic 
activity as well as uh, there are less chances of adverse effects right so the incidences can be uh, reduced of adverse effects it is always a uh, drug of choice in the treatment of infections generally for uh, whipworm eggs pinworm hookworm and roundworm except threadworm except threadworm threadworm we can use uh, these are all conditions with mabendazole while coming to the mechanism action uh, it generally inhibits the uh, you know microtubule synthesis how exactly it inhibits the microtubule synthesis uh, drug that is mabendazole binds with the parasite that is parasitic beta tubulin or one component which is present in microtubule right so it binds with the parasite parasitic beta tubulin and inhibits its further polymerization in addition mabendazole probably blocks the you know glucose uptake in parasites and depletes its glycogen stores efficacy of the drug varies with the gastrointestinal transit time with intensity of infection and perhaps with the strain of parasite while coming to the pharmacokinetic parameters of mabendazole it can be intestinal uh, it can be absorbed from the small intestine that is generally minimal uh, less than 10% of orally administered mabendazole is even absorbed and the absorbed drug is again protein bound they may have a higher efficacy than 90% and it rapidly converted into their inactive metabolites right which may undergo uh, you know first pass metabolism may leading to a half life of 2 to 6 hours 75 to 90% of oral drug generally passes into the fecus so here um, the major disadvantage that is their uh, you know viability because the less than 10% of orally administered drug that is mabendazole is absorbed into the body so remaining 90% will be uh, you know extracted in unchanged form welcome to the dose uh, 10 milligram chewable tablets are available 10 milligram per 5 ml suspension can be given 100 milligram tablet can be given and generally it is the uh, the most uh, what we can say the suitable or the you know uh, more effective than the albendazole in the many cases of uh, trichuriasis so it is a drug of choice while coming to the adverse effects and that is for mabendazole albendazole and ivermectin generally they are you know well tolerated even by the patient in uh, many a poor conditions it may produce mild nausea vomiting diarrhea and abdominal pain even certain rare side effects generally seen that is with the uh, you know high dose therapy are the hypersensitivity reactions like uh, rhesus and urticaria a granulocytosis can be seen alopecia and elevation of liver enzyme level can be observed with the higher doses of mabendazole and these are all the rare side effects generally mabendazole is teratogenic in animals and therefore contraindicated during pregnancy it should be used with caution in children generally younger than two years of age because of uh, limited experience and rare reports of the convulsions in this age group so you know it is advised that it cannot be given to the uh, during pregnancy as well as the children younger than the two year because we do not have a, a suitable data for the mabendazole okay uses they are effective against whipworm that is trichuria next is the pinworm that is enterobase vermicularesis uh, for the treatment of whipworm and ascaris lumbricoids albendazole it is a broad spectrum oral enthalmentic agent it is the drug of choice for the treatment of hydatid disease and cystic sarcosis it is also used in the treatment of pinworm and hookworm, roundworm, whipworm and threadworm infections. As we have seen during classification that al albendazole is a drug of choice and can be used uh, as a first choice of treatment in the cases of anthelmintics. Generally one dose treatment is effective against the roundworm, pinworm and hookworm infections which are comparable to three days treatment with mapendazole. 
3D statement is necessary for tape forms including Histolica nana and it has weak micro flaricidal action and their mechanism of action will be a similar like mabendazole that it inhibits the beta tubulin so that further there won't be a polymerization of those microtubules leading to the expel expulsion of the those round worm type form clinical uses generally it will be administered on empty stomach uh, when used against intraluminal parasites but with a fatty meal when used against tissue parasites it can be used in the cases of ascariasis, trichuriasis, hookworm and pinworm infection in the dose of 400 mg oral per adult and for children um, older than 2 year of age repeated 2 to 3 days for the heavy ascariasis infection as well as for the 2 weeks in pinworm infection in cases of hydrated disease um, adding to surgical removal or aspiration of cyst 400 mg twice daily with meals for one month or longer and the daily therapy for up to six months has been well tolerated even it can be used during neurocystic sarcosis that is corticosteroids generally are given in the enthalmatic drug to decrease the inflammation that is caused by the, the dying organism Albendazole is given in a doses of 400 mg twice a day for up to 21 days. And in cases of other infections, the treatment of cutaneous larva migraines, that is 400 mg daily for 3 days. Uh, in cases of visceral larva migraines, that is 400 mg twice daily for 5 days. For microporidial infection, 400 mg twice for 2 weeks or longer. And for gnetho stomiasis that is 400 milligram twice daily for three weeks next drug that is after mabendazole and albendazole that is piperazin citrate that is arthracin sorry that is arthracin and dispermi welcome to the mechanism action it blocks the responses of the ascaris muscles to acetylcholine and this blockage can cause the flaccid paralysis into the worm and this flaccid paralysis lead to the dislodged from the intestinal wall and expelled into the fecus they are highly effective against the ascaris lumbricoids and the enterobias vermicularis that is for round worm and the thread worm we can use piperazine citrate thiabendazole example that is mentazole and the IOPC name is there is 2,4 thiazole benzimidazole while coming to their mechanism action again same like albendazole and mabendazole they bind with the beta tubulin and inhibit the uh, polymerization of microtubules here beta tubulin is the precursor of formation of microtubules thereby they arrest in cell division in nematodes so those uh, nematodes may have a uh, cell arrest during their cell division and further they cannot undergo multiplication and there won't be a formation of those newly developed egg uh, which kinds of bio biochemical changes can can be observed that is one is inhibition of mitochondrial fumarate reductase as well as it reduces the glucose transport and uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation it has a broad spectrum enthalmatic activity they are used to treat enterobiasis that is a type of threadworm infection ascariasis that is roundworm trichuriasis that is whipworm in addition to its use in human medicine it is widely employed in veterinary practices to control health means so in cases of veterinary practices generally thiabendazole are used next drug that is niclosamide that is cystocide, mansonil, and yomesan. That is 5 chloro N, 2 chloro 4 nitrophenyl, 2 hydroxy benzamide. Their mechanism of action. They generally inhibit the anaerobic phosphorylation of adenosine diphosphate by the mitochondria of the parasite itself and it interferes with the anaerobic generation of ATP by tapeworm itself so leading to the removal of those worms 
so it inhibits the separation and blocking glucose absorption by the intestinal nematode function uses these are the agents for choice for the treatment of tenia solium and the tenia saginata a saline perk that is for one to two hour after the ingestion of this drug is recommended that is to remove those damaged colex and warm infections quinacrine that can aid for this purpose also next drug that is praziquantel that is biltricide it is two cyclohexyl carbonyl one two three six seven eleven b hexahydro four h pyrazino two one a isoquinoline four one it increases cell membrane permeability of the susceptible worms resulting in loss of intracellular calcium and loss of extracellular sodium massive contractions and the ultimate paralysis of the flock musculature occurs the worms may lose their group grip to the intestinal mucosa and it will be removed from the site of intestinal mucosa and expelled out from the body with from the fecus while coming to their use it has become the agent of choice for the treatment of infections caused by flock infections so this is all about the anthel mantics what we have seen during today's lecture that is the classification uh, according to the chemical structure or chemical moiety as well as according to the type of infections with the certain examples of infections certain types of infective specific worms with mechanism action contraindications adverse effects of albendazole mebendazole pyrazintal thank you